Hello. Anybody there? I can't tell. It says it's recording. So I've been trying to uh, log on. I still haven't got the Zoom thing down that good. I'm assuming this is working. Hope I'm right. It says it's recording. So here we go. Uh, I brought along St. Anne and St. Mary and St. Joseph and Jesus. So we get the whole family here. Grandmother, Mary, Mary's husband, and Mary's kids. So you get a couple of generations in there. So, hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord art with thee, blessed art thou among women, and blessed art the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. All right, so anyway, I got the whole family here. Hopefully this is working. I had a lot of trouble logging in. I wasn't sure about all the fixings, but so this is recording, so I'm hoping your people are watching. Okay, I had them sitting up on my... Family Bible, pretty good size. So I'm gonna put that aside before I get going. So we're showing even a further upgrade. Remember I couldn't find flat leaves, but I found some flat leaves because my house plant shed leaves. So now the uh, upper corner layer has a nice roof. It's just about waterproof now because you get those nice big fat leaves shedding the rain. So there's that. Like I said, that's gonna go in the yard. I'm gonna plant some grass seed in there. And before long, I have a little garden outside and spring comes. Now another thing, uh, I said I was gonna do some drawings. And so I had this book, I used to work in publishing and they used to give us samples. So here's a sample book, but there's nothing in it. So what I do is I use them for sketching. So I picked this one up, it says coronavirus, March 18th. Now the first drawing I did was, I was sitting there watching TV a cat was on my lap. So there's me drawing my cat. Those red things are my feet, my slippers. And then I'm drawing my hat. And then I drew the drawing of the drawing of the drawing. So I went as far as I could with that one. That was kind of fun. So you got to make yourself, you got to entertain yourself sometimes when you're stuck in the house. So the same cat, next day is up in the chair. There he is. She, I call her fluff nut. She's a little fluff ball. She got little stubby legs. When I let her in the house, she runs because she's a little nervous. We call the torpedo because she has little stubby legs and she scoots. And then uh, the other night, we had the light on in the corner. You see that? Did the lamp. And when I was done with the pencil drawing, I took crayon. The yellow crayon accentuated the light a little bit more. And there's my 20-year-old uh, cat. And he's wondering why I'm drawing him. And then, instead of watching the TV, I did a portrait of the TV. And all those little statues are little Marian statues in the in little cubby holes there. The next thing I did was negative space. You all know about negative space. So this is a little thing. It was a brace for a shelf. But we have them hanging on our, or sitting on our kitchen windowsill because we just liked them enough and we didn't have any shelves we wanted to put up. But I drew the negative space first and then I just colored in with yellow the, the white. So focus on negative space, it helps you sometimes. Now remember surreal drawing? I said I was gonna do surreal drawing. So here's a surreal drawing. Now did you notice the fan is really just leaves. Right? It looks like a fan, but if that was to turn, it, the leaves would break off, it would be a mess. So that's surreal. You can tell that it, it's a drawing of a fan, but you're also drawing a leaf. Combine in such a way that it's surreal. Also, they've got square wheels on something that's in the air, which is odd. Look at the, uh, the hose. The hose becomes a snake. Both things are recognizable, but in this combination, it's surreal. And lastly, up in the top there, with the same motion, I drew flames and then leaves. If you look closely, it's the same motion for the leaves is the same motion they did for the flames. It's just reversed, whether it's positive or negative space. So that's a surreal sketch I said I would do. And lastly, I have in the air, the whole thing's in the air because you see the mountains on the back and the, on the bottom there. And lastly, 
Just to find myself having some despairing thoughts because we get stuck in the house all this time. And, you know, you're thinking bad things, but you can think good things. And if you look closely, the good things outweigh the bad things. You know, health, Mary, Jesus, hope, faith, God, good, and the evil things, I only came up with five. So I wanted to have more good thoughts than bad thoughts. So that's my sketchbook. Now, I hope that's as far as I've got. I hope that by the end of this thing, I don't have to fill this whole book up. That would be a drag. Okay, so that's out of the way. Now, today, we're going to do package design. This is just a quick review of just some highlights. I mean, this isn't everything that ever happened, but it just gives you an idea of how this developed. Package design is just anything you buy in the store is in a package, right? So somebody had to design that. So in 1500 BC, 1,500 years before Jesus, bark, wood, and animal skins. And people were just hunters and gatherers. We didn't have houses. We just we built temporary shelters. We moved from place to place. And whatever you could make with animal skins or leaves, things you could find around, that was package design because they didn't call it that. And then 1500 AD, 3,000 years later, uh, that's after Jesus AD. It's kind of messy there. Metals are used, so they started using metals. You know, think of tin bought tin cans, that sort of thing. Then in 16, oops, 1609, paper making. That's when Chinese developed, invented paper making a little before that, but it wasn't until 1609 that we had paper introduced to Europe and that we could really start making things with paper. You know how much paper we use. All right, well, back then, all they had was animal skins, and they dried them out, and the, the, the priests and ministers and stuff would use by hand that would be pages of a book. So very few people could get hold of books, because only the rich people could afford that. So anyway, that changed a lot, the paper. 1809, Napoleon invented food life extension with tin cans. That was a big deal, because he was marching all over Europe trying to conquer everything. And to keep the army going, you have to feed them food with food. So in order to keep the food fresh, or at least, if not fresh, good food, you put, they, they came up with that. Okay, so that's a, a major change in package design. Cardboard box is introduced in 1817, which is what we're going to do today. I'm going to show you how to do a cardboard box uh, package design. And then 1852, paper bag machine. I don't know if you can read this, but I'm just reading it to you. 1866, this is when what we see as modern advertising kind of really came in. Dr. Lyons tooth powder. So that was the first time, instead of just making a package, he put his name on it, Dr. Someone, Dr. Lyons, and then you want to get his name out there, you're branding. And that's, that's all the big thing now, everybody's got a brand. You know? Coca-Cola came in in 1870, just when, I, when this house was built. Coca-Cola introduced, first just at the soda shop, they just give you a little soda in a thing and serve it to you. But then a few years later, Coca-Cola introduced this, the, uh, the bottles and six packs of Coca-Cola. 1896, Nabisco Ritz crackers, put them in cellophane wrappers, so we still have that. But that's all they did, that's all they had at first. Then they said, hey, let's put these in a box. So they did that. So these, you see how these things develop. Kellogg Brothers, 1906. Kellogg cereal, still big. And then first they just put it in a plastic bag. And they said, well, let's put the plastic bag in, in a box. And that's what we have today is cereal boxes like that. The aerosol spray can, bug killer were first. And then it became other things. 1940, just before World War II. And then in 1950s, plastics came in. Before that, everything was wood or metal. You didn't have all this plastic stuff. You, you didn't, they had it, but they didn't use it much. And all of a sudden, it became a big thing. 1952, Swanson developed the TV dinners. I think they still make them. That's about when I was, I was just born around there. And I remember having TV dinners on a little tray. And that was, that was kind of a big thing. Then. And then in the 1950s, mass marketing through television came in. That was huge. And from the 1950s up until now, everything we see now is on television. It's, you know, it's all wide open. And eco-friendly is a trend now. So a lot of things uh, were disposable. Now we're trying to do a little less disposable and do more recycling. So everything you see 
comes in a box. I just bought some Gorilla Tape to fix a chair. It's the box. And so I had to design this box. It's got these tabs, these little cutout holes so you kind of see the, the Gorilla Tape that goes in there. Everything comes in a box. So what we're gonna do is, I want you to think about taking a box, is in case, case you get your cereal, strawberries, and take it apart, but you have to take it apart carefully to make it work. So I just, I took it apart already, but then I just put little staples in the corner just so I can show you how this is done. First, you gotta find the seam, because it's glue. This thing is punched up flat, and then they glue it together. So there's a glue there, see what I'm doing? See that? I just stapled that, but before I had to be real careful and pull it apart from the, see the little the glue there that gave way. And I got a couple little staples down here in the bottom. Okay, and then you open it up. And what you can do is make up your own thing, design your own box. You're going to make a package and it's going to be for mass consumption. The whole world's going to want to buy it. What do you want to sell? What's the the thing you think would be the best thing to sell. So you design this whole thing, and then you reassemble the box the other way. You have to change, move, take all these folds and fold them back the other way, and so it's all like this, and fold everything back so that you have a new box. Okay, that's what you're gonna do. Now, this, this is a smaller version. This was uh, stovetop stuffing, okay? You're gonna change this into a box. Now, you can draw on this or paint or color, crayons, whatever you want to do, but it, it, this, this doesn't take um, paint, crayons, it doesn't do it as well. You're much better off making it on something like this. So if you have any file folders that you see in the uh, file cabinets, if you can find one that's about the same size as the box, what you can do is, again, I don't need that anymore, make a template. So what I did is I took this, really, box. I know this box works, because this is the one that came from the store. Put it down, draw a line around it, you know, take a pencil and outline it just so, and then work on that. And you can make a nice one, and it'll take the paint better. You'll have better design, you know, a better show, because you'll be in color, it'll be vibrant, it'll look better. Now you have to be careful when you do that, because these are all tabs, right? So you have to make sure after you outline it all, Take a pencil, draw a line where all the edges go. And you have to make sure you cut into those tabs so they won't fold separately. Because you have to fold separately. So you've got to cut in wherever there's a tab. So you can see what I did first is I went with a, uh, a pencil all the way around and outlined it. Now to get it to fold well, you have to score it. We, we talked about scoring before. But for every, every place you've got to make a fold now, take a ruler after you've got it lined out and you just Press hard and go like that. On a, everywhere you're gonna have a fold. And the difference is, if you do that, look how easy it folds. I, this is scored first and it folds nicely. If you just try and fold it by yourself, look at the difference. So this is a scored edge. This is an edge you didn't score, you weren't careful. So if you take, Edge of a scissors and score it around when you want to take folds, then you'll get a nice, beautiful design. And then that'll fold just nicely. You're going to color it all in. Now, in order for me to show you that, I wanted to uh, decide something that I would like to market. So, what I came up with was healthy family antivirus cake Mary, Jesus, and Joseph. Now, doesn't that make sense this time of the year? Everybody's stuck in the house because of the stupid virus. Pesky virus. I hate the virus. Well, you can't really hate, but you can hate what it does. So anyway, healthy family, antivirus cake. Right? So how does it work? Well, first of all, you have to realize it's, it's non-toxic. It's not going to hurt you. And the first thing you have to do is open your heart from the top. So there you go. You get the antivirus cake, open the top. It's not toxic. And so then what do you do? Here's the uh, instructions. First, 
put it into a bowl, wash your hands. Bake at room temperature for several weeks. Wash your hands. Let cool for a few more weeks. Wash your hands. Thank God for life and family. And then wash your hands. So that was kind of cute, fun thing to do. And uh, it, that's where I made my good thoughts outweigh my bad thoughts about this whole virus thing. Pesky virus. Now, I hope that this is recording. Um, I thought I was going to see people around the edge and that sort of thing. Um, I'll have to work on that. But hopefully this all came out all right. And um, give this a shot. All you need is any box. Just tell you, if you don't have one in the house, just tell your parents next time they go shopping, bring back a bag, uh, box of cereal. And you, you don't have to make your own. If that's too much trouble, you can just use it. That's what I did. I did it quick. It could have came out okay. But it would have been a little more showy if I had done it on something like this. It's just like with a leprechaun layer. The minute I do something, I thought, well, could have, done, could have done a little different, a little better maybe. So next time I make a box, I'm going to use the box as a template to do it on something like this, which will be a sharper, more appealing look. All right, so now i got to think about what we're going to do next. And uh, right now I'm out of designs. So it's a pleasure uh, being with you. I hope this is being with you. And uh, Ave Maria. I'm going to see if I can shut this off. End meeting. Bye, folks. I hope everybody's doing well. Goodbye.